Xenoestrogens, shitty food, plastics, lack of breastfeeding, lack of fathers, lack of purpose, chemicals in the water, the devil. Are these things responsible for the recent rise in transgenderism? Yes. But what about anime? I understand that simply by proposing this hypothesis, I'm going to be upsetting basically every single person who could be watching this. On one side of the political spectrum, you have people who think that people are born trans, and therefore nothing could cause someone to become trans. On the other end of the political spectrum, you have people who love anime. But hear me out. There's a type of thread that you see occasionally posted on 4chan's LGBT board. There's a type of thread where someone will ask, did anime make me trans? Or, did anime make you trans? Or, does anyone else think anime made them trans? And among the replies, you will see without fail two recurring answers. Either, no, that's ridiculous, you were born trans and anime for some reason just made you realize that. And the other reply, yes. The idea that anime is making people on 4chan trans is hilarious, but many of these people seem to actually believe that about themselves. Enough people that I got curious. Not that kind of curi bad choice of words. I mean, could it be true? Could anime be making people trans? So that's what this video is about. Hypothesis, anime makes you trans. Is it possible? What evidence is there? And if it's true, what does that mean? You are what you eat is not just a good description of cannibalism, but also a fact of life. If you eat healthy, you will be healthy. If you eat garbage, you will be garbage. But this premise can be extended to all aspects of life. You are what you consume. You are what you are surrounded by. We'll start answering the question of whether our hypothesis is possible by answering a much broader question and working our way down. First, can your surroundings meaningfully influence who you are? The easiest example of this would be other people. We all understand peer pressure. Or in the entrepreneurial world, there's the saying that you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. The idea being that if you spend your time around successful people, you will also start evading taxes. Or if all your friends spend their spare time at the gym, some of that work ethic and enthusiasm for fitness is likely to rub off on you and you're more likely to work out yourself. On the other hand, if your friends all spend their time jacking off and swapping doujin links on Discord, well... Weird! Gross! Ew! I hardly think this needs a study to back it up, but here's one anyway. In 2009, a study found that children who had overweight friends were more likely themselves to overeat. There's a reason why your mom didn't want you hanging around with a bad crowd, and it wasn't just because she was a bitch, though that was a factor. SHUT UP! SHUT UP! SHUT UP! Okay, step two then. Can media specifically have a meaningful influence on you? Considering that I cried like a baby while watching Angel Beats, the answer seems pretty obvious to me. And I'm not just talking about an emotional response, either. It isn't at all uncommon to hear someone say that some book, movie, or yes, even anime, changed their life. That it fundamentally changed the way they look at the world, or the way they act. That it even changed part of their personality. It changed them. Easy enough. Step three, can media influence your sexuality? Oh, I don't know. Maybe try asking the porn addict who used to watch lesbian porn and has now progressed to enjoying a mix of golf balls being puttered into gaping assholes and hentai goblins if maybe their media consumption has affected their sexuality. Maybe ask one of the many furries who was forever changed by watching Space Jam if perhaps media influenced their sexuality. You might say that these things were simply awakened in these people because they were already that way, naturally. But here's my rebuttal to that. It doesn't make any fucking logical sense. Okay, first, I understand that not all furries want to fuck dogs, but let's be clear, some people do. Is there any evolutionary reason why someone would naturally have the desire to fuck dogs? No, there's no evolutionary advantage to fucking dogs. Let's take it one step further. Is there any possibility that someone could naturally be attracted to hentai? I'm not talking about the fact, of course, that hentai involves tits and ass and is attractive for that reason. You gotta have them ribs. And pussy too. I'm talking about people who can't get it up to 3D, but are all over 2D, so to speak. Is there any way for that to come about naturally? No. That kind of attraction cannot logically be natural if the object of attraction in question does not exist in nature. Hentai, golf, 
and goblins do not exist in nature. Okay, maybe the jury's still out on the goblins, but that isn't even important. We have nonetheless shown examples of how sexuality can be influenced by media. And if sexuality can be influenced by media, our hypothesis then, as far as I can see, is possible. Not just possible, but even somewhat likely, if other aspects of sexuality are influenced by media, is there any reason to believe that transgender desires wouldn't be? And, of course, anime is media. But how do we know that anime has an influence towards transgenderism? Sure, we have some anonymous testimony, and that testimony only goes that one way, but couldn't anime easily have an effect in the opposite direction? It could, and I think you could easily make a video detailing situations in which that might happen. But, with all that we've seen so far, I've developed as best of an experiment as I can with the current hypothesis. It isn't a very good experiment. I do not have the resources to do much of an experiment, nor is an experiment measuring something like this even very feasible to begin with. That's why, so far, we've been looking at logical arguments and trends. We're acting in the realm of psychology rather than neurochemistry. So, the next segment will be a vignette taken from an amalgamation of stories found online and the general state of Western civilization. I hope it will serve both as a possible explanation and as a test. If someone with transgender desires hears the vignette and it matches their experience, then, if they wish, they can leave a comment and say so, or they can say it's off base. It isn't worth much, but there's some small amateur data to be found in that. Let's imagine a boy named Jack. For one reason or another, Jack does not see an example of happiness from his father. Either his father is physically absent, as in he went to get cigarettes one day and never came back, or he's unhappy, both quite common, as seen by the rate of fatherlessness and the rate of male suicide, both of which are high and rising. Or it's possible that his father is happy, but is emotionally absent because Maybe he lives in a society in which masculinity is seen as forbidding emotions and affection. Poss possible. Or maybe Jack's father is both present and visibly happy, but he's not what I would call wholesomely happy, and neither is the world around Jack. In society, in culture, in media, Jack sees men going down generally one of two paths. Either men are happy dominating others, such as in business, or sports, or they're just unhappy, and yet are still portrayed in a positive light because they're fucking really smart for being unhappy. Jack, of course, wants to be happy. It's about the most natural desire that a person can have, but for whatever reason, Jack doesn't desire that kind of dominating happiness. He wants to be wholesomely happy happy without the need to dominate someone else, in other words. Jack is told no stories of heroes either, no old legends, no lives of the saints. His parents aren't religious, they're too modern to be telling stories, or most likely don't care enough about him to read him much of anything. Instead, he's given unrestricted internet access. Now, if Jack was lucky, this could have been his saving grace. He might have stumbled upon something like Lord of the Rings, or even fucking Dragon Ball Z, media that gives him heroes to try and emulate. Heroes who don't dominate others, per se, but defeat evil and save others. These things might have shown him the value in that kind of happiness. They could have replaced his desire for wholesome happiness. Or they might have shown wholesome happiness from a male character, fucking Goku, raising a family. <laughs> Or, if he was extremely lucky, Jack might have seen wholesome happiness in other places, in the simple joys of life. He's watching men out in the woods building cabins on YouTube, dreaming about having a homestead, a big family, living out in the woods, happy. But Jack either saw none of these things, or if he did see them, they were drowned out by everything else. They still seemed distant and unobtainable. Then, one fateful day, likely in his teenage years, Jack finds anime. Specifically, he finds cute girls doing cute things, a loose genre of anime that involves exactly what it sounds like. And the girls in these anime are happy, wholesomely happy. Not happy because they just humiliated their rival or outsmarted the enemy, but because life is good. Jack is hooked, and he devours these shows. Consciously or not, 
he's found what he's been looking for for his entire life. Jack begins to relate more and more with the characters in the anime he watches. He wants what they want. They have what he wants. Finally, after all this time, he's found it. And the logic, though likely unconscious, is simple. I want to be happy. This is the only example I have ever seen of being happy in the way I desire. These characters have what I want more than anything else. These characters are just like me, a happy version of me. And they're all women. Maybe this desire means that deep down, I am a woman. Maybe that's the only way I can be happy. Meanwhile, probably also because of his miserable and or lacking father, and of course because of unrestricted internet access, Jack has developed a serious pornography addiction. And like any addiction, either the dose becomes larger, or the user seeks stronger drugs. As normal pornography becomes less exciting, his tastes get more and more taboo. It started with watching K-On, it moved on to trap porn, cross-dressing, and eventually hormone replacement therapy, and statistically, it won't end well. As I said, this vignette is one possible explanation for how anime could make someone trans. I would be very interested in the stories of anyone who could share how their experience goes with or against this explanation. If someone in this kind of situation hears this vignette, and even one person really relates to it, they might start to consider whether or not they have to go through with the surgery, HRT, and anything like that to be happy. Knowledge is power, and I'm hoping this knowledge may give people an actual choice in the matter. Unfortunately, this is about as far as we can go with the hypothesis. Certainly, we haven't proved anything at all. But I hope that what has been demonstrated so far is at least logically consistent. If I'm lucky, it might even be convincing. If it is convincing, though, then ending the video here is going to leave a lot of people hanging. Anyone watching this video who is convinced of these things, especially if they have transgender desires, are anime fans, or both, might be wondering, what now? Okay. Practical advice time if you're trying to avoid this kind of desire or this kind of influence on your mind. You should probably be consuming less media in general, but that's not very helpful. We're talking about media in this video. You know all of that, and inevitably you're going to watch something. I suggest a form of cultural cannibalism. Make it clear in your mind what you want to be, and then consume media that is like that. Am I suggesting that anime in and of itself is bad? Not at all. Fellow Catholic YouTuber PaxTube has a great video on some of the virtues found in anime. I recommend it. Am I saying even that cute girls doing cute things anime is all bad? No, I'm, I'm not saying that either. The best comparison I can make is with alcohol. Drinking alcohol is not a sin, and a glass of wine with dinner can be beneficial to your health. It's a good thing, but some people should not drink alcohol. For a recovering alcoholic, even a sip may as well be poison. And for anyone, drinking too much alcohol is a problem. In the same way, if you're struggling against something like feminization, you should probably cut out all cute girls doing cute things. And since most of us live in an anti-masculine culture, it would be wise for all of us to limit our consumption. Instead, if you want to be good or honorable or masculine, then find media that portrays masculinity in a positive light. If you want, like Jack, to be wholesomely happy, find examples of men who are wholesomely happy. I think this is a good general way to be thinking, rather than just an, a list of approved shows or some shit. But since we're here, here's a few recommendations. Trigun, Gurren Lagann, Kaiji, these are all examples of shows with heroic main characters who are actually good people fighting against evil in one way or another. And what's special about these shows in particular is that the MCs in them each have actual emotions, emotions that would normally be seen by society as unmanly, but are portrayed very positively. 
For more direct replacement, there unfortunately isn't a genre for big men doing wholesome things, as far as I know, but a few shows I know of come close. The two I know of would be something like Usagi Drop or Hinamatsuri, both falling into the strange subgenre of single father characters raising a young daughter. They both have that kind of comfy, slice of life vibe that you might be missing from your cute girl shows, and they help develop a fatherly instinct, which isn't exactly the worst thing in the world to incur. As for movies, uh, please watch Gattaca. It's my favorite movie, and not enough people have seen it. The most motivational shit I've seen in my life. If anyone has any other suggestions, please leave a comment. I'm always on the lookout for more good shit. Uh, I might even make a follow-up about some of the recommendations. Who knows? Anyway, I uh, hope you found this video entertaining or useful or something. Uh, I know it's different than what I normally do, but this is this <laughs> this was the first ever Yeoman Vidya PSA, public service announcement, trying to give back a little bit, get out get out some useful information. As a final note, let me give a story somewhat unrelated, but that kind of drives home the point of you are what you consume. When I was fishing up in Alaska my first year, there was a 40-something year old man there who was working on the boat. He'd worked there for about like 20 years or more, probably 30. And we were just talking about shit. And I was talking about it to his dad, the captain, who was like 70-something, about uh, like God and religion and just like really, you know, deep topics. And his, his father was having like a good conversation about it. And then he butts in as we're talking about like evil and the devil and says that what if the devil is a good guy like on that tv show <laughs> and i said that's ridiculous and he said yeah but how do you know <laughs> i don't know dude you seen that tv show like literally his argument was like i don't know have you seen that tv show so uh let's just a reminder not to let a television show convince you that the devil is a good guy. Ha <laughs> What a great video! Hi, I'm Dalton, the editor. We here at YoCorp are hard at work bringing you the quality content you deserve. But in order to keep producing the streams, stream archives, video essays like this one, and the podcast, we're gonna need money, 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 cash a -rooney. We're committed to having no sponsored content. Nobody actually likes Raid Shadow Legends, and NordVPN steals people's information, allegedly. I'm alleging. That's why we need you. It's simple. Just ask yourself, how much is this content worth to you? A movie ticket, a book, a Netflix subscription, one Bitcoin? Whatever it's worth to you, that's how much we're asking for. And the more you give, the more we can make. Links are in the description, so send in your money now. You wouldn't want this little guy to go hungry, would you? Ha ha ha! What a great video! Ha ha ha! What a great video! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! What a great video! Ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! What a great! Ha ha ha! This has to be the last scroll here. Ha ha ha! What a great video! Ha ha ha! What a great video! What a great video! Hi. <laughs> what a great video. Hi. 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 <laughs> what a great video. <laughs> Hi.